Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is receive. Let's take a look at some of the definitions or ways that we use this verb. The first way you might hear receive used is to mean to be given, presented with, or paid for, for something, right? So uh, we might talk about being given a gift or receiving a gift. Uh, you might hear someone say they've received an award. So that might be the presented with, right? Um, it's, so we can use this as we, we talk about shopping or, or obtaining things, right? So uh, we received this for our payment. A second way you might hear receive used is to mean to suffer, experience, or be subject to certain treatment, right? So um, you might think of a situation where someone received applause, right? So uh, when we use that word treatment, I think sometimes our, our mind might be, go to the negative, but it doesn't have to be. It could be positive. Um, we can receive uh, criticism, right? So that would be that idea of, of experiencing kind of negative feedback. A third way you might hear receive used is to mean to greet or welcome someone formally. Frequently, you'll hear about someone receiving guests or receiving visitors. And again, that's the idea that um, you are welcoming them to this particular lo location or place. A fourth way you might hear receive used is to mean to form an idea as a result of some sort of perception or uh, experience. Right. So uh, with this, I, I feel like I, I frequently uh, see a phrasing that's similar to I received the impression. Right. Or maybe a bit more informally, I got the impression. Right. But that's the same idea there to to have this idea that that someone is thinking something or feeling a particular way uh, based on something they've said or something they've done. A fifth way we can use the verb receive is very specific to the sport of tennis. Uh, and so it's when one player um, uh, gets, right? I was trying to think of a word other than receive to use here, but gets the serve, right? So um, the player whom uh, is, is getting the serve um, or being served the ball, uh, that is the action we're describing here. They are receiving serve. Uh, you should know that receive is a regular verb. To make our progressive tense, we're going to drop the E and then add ING to form receiving. The past tense and participle forms of this verb um, are essentially made by dropping the E and then adding another ED. So if you're a longtime viewer of uh, these videos, you know that in our past tense form, we're not going to have two E's in a row here. So uh, our past tense form here, received, uh, you'll notice, has a D sound. Uh, and that's because our base verb, receive, V, v ends in a voiced V sound. Um, so that's why we're, we're making a, a D sound and we're not adding an extra syllable as we make that past tense and participle form. Now let's take a moment to look at some phrasal verbs with receive. The first that you might see or hear would be to receive back. This means that we are obtaining, taking, or acquiring someone or something back. So we might have had it originally, someone else takes it, and then we, we get it back. An example here, all forms were received back last week. Right. So um, here, maybe a, a company had asked their employees to update some paperwork, and then uh, the maybe it's human resources department, right, is making a statement. They obtained these forms back. Another phrasal verb you might hear is receive from. This can mean to obtain, obtain take, or acquire something from uh, a person or from uh, another object or thing. An example here. I receive some angry comments from viewers. 
right? Um, now, this might sound like uh, kind of a silly thing. I've, I've had some critical comments before, but I would say this week I received some angry ones uh, with some of my example sentences, uh, claiming that I was lying and, and misinforming people uh, about a particular issue. So that's not going to stop me from making these videos uh, or, or sharing uh, real ways that our verbs are being used uh, to describe things that are happening in our world. But uh, for a while, I was taking uh, those those particular comments. Another phrasal, uh, or another way I should say, to use the phrasal verb receive from is to mean to admit, accept, or welcome someone from uh, some place or some location. An example here, the local officers received the suspect from the neighboring state's officers. Okay. So uh, th this happens occasionally where someone commits a crime in one U.S. state and then flees, g sort of runs away, drives away, however it might be, to another state. Those officers in that other state may make an arrest and then uh, sort of uh, send the person back to the state where they committed the crime. So this... Uh, the crime in whatever state it might have been here, uh, where it was committed, those officers are accepting the suspect or the person who has been arrested. The last phrasal verb we'll look at today is to receive into. This means to admit, accept, or welcome someone into a particular group or organization. An example here. New members were received into the organization at a special ceremony. So this would be like a more formal welcoming of new members. Now let's continue using our verb of the day receive in two different verb tenses. Today we're going to practice the present progressive and the present perfect progressive. Some of your other instructors or textbooks might call this present continuous or present perfect continuous. They mean the same thing. I, I like using progressive and P's to help me uh, remember uh, some special things about the verb tenses, and I'll talk about that as we go along. So we tend to use the present progressive to talk about an action that is in progress or something that is happening right now. And I hope present progressive, uh, the two P's there will help you remember you need two parts to make the affirmative. We need a present form of B, so am, is, are, and then we need the ing form of the verb. Here's an example. The new film is receiving mass praise. Right? This means many, many people are praising it. Now, if I want to make a negative present progressive sentence, what I want to do again is use my present form of be, then not, then the ing form of the verb. Here's another. American soldiers are not receiving adequate care for alcohol abuse. Uh, I borrowed this sentence from a recent magazine article uh, describing an issue that faces the, the U.S. military, right? So they're saying right now, as it is, we are, uh, we, the United States government and the United States military is not providing this, this, uh, the right level of care for this particular challenge. Finally, if you want to make a yes or no question in the present progressive, start with a form of B, whichever form matches your subject and the subject comes next, and then you're going to have the ING form of the verb. Here's another example. Are we receiving serve this game? Right? So imagine two tennis players, uh, maybe a, a pair uh, from this week here, right? A doubles pair kind of talking like, is, is it, uh, are we going to be getting the serve, right? Will the opponents be serving the ball? Okay, now let's take a look at the present perfect progressive. We use this verb tense frequently uh, to talk about an action that has started in the past and continues into the present. Many times we're using this to kind of focus on how long a particular action has been sort of going on or, or taking place. For the present perfect progressive, notice three Ps, 
you should remember you need three parts to make this verb tense. So we're going to use either have or has, depending on what our subject is. Then we're going to use been, B-E-E-N, uh, the participle form of be. And then we're going to use the ing form of the verb. So that's our structure for the affirmative. You can see it here. The people of Poland have been receiving Ukrainian refugees with open arms. Right. Um, so uh, this has been going on for, uh, gosh, over three weeks now, I, I believe. And um, and fortunately, it looks like it will continue for some time. But uh, the people of, of Poland, again, um, are accepting, taking in. Um, that's uh, essentially right. what this verb uh, means in this context. Now, let's make a negative present per perfect progressive sentence. To do this, we're going to start again with have or has, whichever form matches our subject. Okay? But then we're going to insert not, then been, then the ing form of the verb. You can see that here. This nursing home hasn't been receiving indoor visitors since the start of the pandemic, right? So um, again, I saw this mentioned in an article, notice uh, uh, noting a, a very, very strict environment at, at one particular place. People are still welcome to visit with people outdoors, but not indoors, right? So again, this has been going on for two years now. Uh, the next uh, thing we're going to look at is making a yes or no question in the present perfect progressive. To do this, we start with have or has, then we have our subject, then been, B-E-E-N, and then the I-N-G form of the verb. Here's another example. Has the company been receiving, receiving stolen property? Right? So again, that idea of accepting something. Now, let's take a moment to look at some words that are related to our verb, receive. And our first other word here is the noun receiver. This can be used in a few different ways. One would be to refer to the part of a telephone or similar device um, where we have the earpiece. Um, and the earpiece is translating electrical signals into sounds, right? So someone might tell you to pick up the receiver. Okay. A second way you hear the noun receiver used a great deal in English is to refer to a uh, player who catches a pass or a kick. So really common in American football to hear uh, particular athletes or players referred to as being receivers. So an example of that, he can play receiver or running back. Right. So here's someone who has the ability to play two different positions in that sport. Another word you might encounter, especially if you work in accounting, finance, or business, is the noun receivable. Okay. This is an amount that is owed to a business. So imagine you're selling on credit. Right. So somebody is going to pay you perhaps in installments, little payments or or make one large payment at some point in the future. Right. After you've made that sale, that is a receivable and it's regarded as an asset uh, in terms of accounting. So an example of this, what were our receivables on December 31st? So um, businesses are, are going to keep sort of an ongoing record of exactly how much is owed to them on a particular date or at a particular time. And here someone is asking kind of at the end of the year, what was the balance in that particular account? Another related word you might encounter is the noun receivership. So here we're referring to a situation in which a company is bankrupt and another person has been appointed to sort of manage what, what money the company might have or any sort of ongoing business operations or financial affairs. So an example of how you might hear this used in a sentence would be the construction company went into receivership last week. Right. So here uh, we're noting uh, many times that a, a company has uh, filed with a court to to notify them 
it is bankrupt or it wants to go through a particular form of bankruptcy hearings. Um, and we need someone sort of to oversee our uh, financial affairs as this as we work through this particular process. I know that's a really uh, particular uh, way that gets used, but again, um, if you're working in law and uh, specifically in bankruptcy, uh, in finance and accounting, you may encounter this particular word. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great day.